this can all right so thank you for being here we are um coming this will be posted in the nature inspired teacher group we had a little bit of technology woes but we figured it out and we persevered i'm super excited that sandy is with us today sandy schwartz and this is her book finding eco happiness um and sandy i think your book came out this spring is that right or recently yes it was in may in may it seems like years ago <laughs> just a few months ago actually isn't that funny how time it, because i i know i had it on pre-order and this summer the book lived in my car and i think it's a perfect oh. kind of book for when you have to start and stop and so my mm. kids are mountain bikers and there's times where i'm like waiting for them and so it's like just the right amount of um you just kind of usually i'm a front to back kind of reader, but for your book, I really do feel like you can jump around a lot and get lots of great ideas. So I'm so excited for you being here. And I think where we'll start is just have you define for us what it does eco happiness mean? Yes, yeah, so it's the connection we have to nature that helps us feel happier and calmer. And I, I really wanted to dig into this topic. Um, for you know, my, my background was I was an environmental studies major and involved in environmental communications and writing for many years, but also in the same path, struggling with my own mental health, um, particularly anxiety. And it just sort of the light bulb went off one day. Um, you know, I started writing about this, but uh, and broadly as well, like positive psychology tools like mindfulness and focusing, you know, when you're doing art and gratitude practice. And then, yeah, the light bulb went off and I said, well, we really need to, you know, address and, and look into, or I wanted to, you know, spend two years <laughs> digging into the intersection of, of mental health and nature and all the benefits that it provides. And my ultimate hope as an environmentalist is that once people recognize, for those that don't yet, um, that it does benefit our health and well-being and our children, that they'll want to protect it, right? So... We want, we don't want them to pave over the playgrounds and we don't need more, you know, <laughs> buildings and polluted rivers and oceans. Let's protect it so we can all enjoy it. It's a little human centric, but whatever it takes. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. And what I think is neat, sorry, there's a little bit of feedback. I'm not sure why that is. I'm going to mute while I'm talking, then I'll unmute you, Sandy. But um, what I think, one of the things that I really like about the book, I've read really over the last 12 years, a ton of books about nature-based approaches, really specific to early childhood. But what I love about your book is it's really focused not just on children, but, you know, lifespan and that you can do this as a family. And I think that's really important. So I feel like this book would be great for for, you know, parents and grandparents. It's also great for educators. And I feel like there's so many tools in here and it's almost like a buffet of ideas that you can, you could use. And I really like your writing style too, in that the it's, it's brief and you can kind of jump in and take, you know, nuggets from there. Cause one of my favorite books is Coyote's Guide to Men, um, Coyote, the Coyote Mentoring Guide, which is all about nature-based approaches, but it's really dense and really hard. And a lot of my students, my college students and students who are in my programs that I do with nature-based approaches for early childhood, they're like, it's not accessible, but I feel like this book is a really great one. So I want to just kind of open it up to asking you, you know, if you can give us some, you know, I, there's tons of great ideas in here, but maybe give us a flavor of some of the different um, strategies that, that you like to use. I'm sorry, I, wait a minute, I, you can unmute yourself. <laughs> There you go. Yeah, so so I jotted down a few things when you posed that question. Um, and, you know, for me, some of it's just so simple. You know, if I need to go on walks a lot, it, it helps. And especially as a writer, I feel like I can, if I just go for a walk, my mind opens up, the creativity starts flowing. I start writing, you know, blog posts and articles in my head as I'm walking. So I really do enjoy walks and bike rides. And so it's just so simple, so basic. I mean, I'm not talking about hiking up a mountain. I am just like in my neighborhood or at a local park. Um, eating outside, another really simple thing that any of us can do. And I think we really, you know, started to do more of that during COVID. And I know we're in, we're in opposite climates. I'm down in Florida this time of year and <laughs> you're where it's a little chillier, but 
you know, we all have to acclimate to um, the weather as well. And, uh, but when we can have the opportunity, even if you can't get outside, you know, to sit by the window and enjoy the views of the trees in, in your backyard or wherever you are, um, you know, go to go find restaurants by the water, you know, there's just something so soothing about that. So again, so basic, so simple. Um, and then, you know, something I've been doing lately, uh, I just started playing pickleball in the last few uh, months. And that's kind of been all the rave, certainly um, down in Florida, but I know it's spreading, you know, all, all over. And I really enjoy it for a number of reasons, you know, um, it's helped me you know, with anxiety as, you know, um, I feel like during COVID my anxiety ramped up, like when it was time to go back out in the world. And so pickleball happens to be a pretty social activity. And then it's outdoors most of the time. Uh, although I, I have been playing inside a little bit because of the weather down here in Florida, but you know, when you're outside and enjoying it, it it's just so lovely and the, and the breeze on you, on you and you're focused so much on on hitting the ball. So it, it's a lot of that mindfulness and, and fitness and it all it all combines. Um, and then the other thing I want to bring in is art. Um, you know, and and my the chapter creative art chapter was really fun to write because there's so many op, you know options. And for me in particular, I've um, over the years taken a lot of um, watercolor painting classes and I focus primarily on like taking pictures of flowers and trees while I'm traveling and on these walks, <laughs> even in my neighborhood, and then painting them. And I'm excited because I'm going to be starting a drawing class as well, which I feel like will give me a little bit more background. It's, you know, I kind of jumped into the painting and I really think you have to start with the drawing. But my goal is always to paint or draw and focus on nature. I just find it very soothing. It's awesome. Um, yeah, I do a lot, um, a lot of creative projects. I think that really is what fuels me. And what I find is that doing art outdoors adds a whole nother element to it. And, you know, there's something about really tuning in and really noticing your environment when you are, even if you're doing like abstract painting of the colors, you know, or just being out there, if it's writing while you're outdoors or, you know, creating land art or collecting things or all kinds of, I think, like you said, like keeping it really simple. Cause I think sometimes people do feel like, you know, it has to be kind of complicated. And um, I know in the book you talk about sit spots. I didn't know, maybe you want to chime in on that a little bit. Yes. I mean, the thread throughout all, I mean, so the different chapters involve, there's a whole chapter on mindfulness and creative arts, food, animals, gratitude, um, all. But to me, you know, I really kind of start with mindfulness, mindfulness, because that's the thread that runs through all of these. Um, and, and in our experience with nature as well, because if we don't take the time to allow all of our senses to absorb nature around us, we're not going to, you know, reap those benefits, you know, that are all scientifically backed and, and I enjoy digging into. And so like finding a sit spot and that can be, again, it doesn't have to be, you know, um, in the middle of the woods, you know, where you can't, you know, it, it can be, you know, your backyard, maybe you have a tree house if, if your kids are lucky enough or a swing set or a hammock or just uh, a blanket where they can, you know, find the you know, spot in the corner of the yard or take them to a local park or a nature center. And, you know, maybe it's a place you go once a month, once a week, uh, five minutes before homework time it just really allows them to unwind and take mm -hmm. those deep breaths in and, and, and enjoy nature. Yeah, definitely. Um, and we have a couple of people who are on the call with us. Uh, Hope is in New York and uh, Nancy is here in Vermont. Um, and I just wanted to ask if you guys wanted to chime in about, you know, connections from what Sandy's already said or questions that you have. So thank you so much for the opportunity. Um, I come at this as April knows a little. So I um, am a late, a late bloomer, like Leo, <laughs> not to education. This is my like 38th year in education, but to the official genre of outdoor education. I've always, you know, like my kids did Girl Scouts and we did camping and things like that. Um, but to the official genre of outdoor education, where I'm trying, where I'm, 
my lens has been now using um, out the out of doors with adult ELLs because currently I'm working with adult ELLs. And when I mention that to people, it's like this aha, like, like we focus on it being good for younger people and we need to mm -hmm. focus on it being good for the same reason that we like, like Sandy said, to go take a walk in your creativity. I am taking that and saying, well, let's use that with older students. Let's, you know, sit outside. Let's, and um, so that is like the lens that I'm merging what you're saying with. And um, I will be having a set an experience similar to April. So April, I applied for the NAA convention to be a speaker and they picked me and it's on like the last day. So similar to yours. And the topic is using outdoor education with adult ELLs. And they just said someone hasn't presented, like they haven't taken that as a perspective. And I think of myself and I'm hearing what you're saying in April and soon to what Nancy will say is, it's like, we're not taking our own advice of what we need as people and saying that's what adult learners need. Mm -hmm. And and I just think that like, I don't know, like I want to say like, well, when will that happen? I think we are making it happen. And and I look at like your pine cone things, and I look at what you know April does, and I was like, my adult student, that would be such a way to lower their affect and get them to talk without even realizing that they are having English conversations with e with each other. Yeah, that's a good that, you know, I, I just want to like that's why I follow what you're doing, April. At this point, like even because it's also, but even if I'm not immediately like participating, it's I look at the like I read my adult class, I read them, um, Bird Baylor's Everyone Needs a Rock. And then I, and then their assignment was go find your rock. You can paint it. You don't have to. And then to the best of your English ability, write a story about that rock. The stuff that they shared was beautiful. And I had never done that. I, and, and I was, and they were like, what's like our next one? Like they were so happy to, and we, I, mean, I teach them via zoom because they're from so many, they're from mm. different areas, but like, that then like immediately the next week, I just totally changed how I was, I was like, we're gonna do as many things that I can get you to do that we can have a conversation. And then between that class and the next class, go outside, take some pictures, draw, paint, write a poem. And it was probably, I've been doing adult ed for quite a few years. I would definitely say this was the most creative of the ways, I mean, I do have a book yeah. I have to use, but it was like, all right, great. You have to go to the supermarket. So walk along the supermarket, take pictures of the fruits and vegetables and what might you grow mm. at home? And they just, they had never learned that way either. Mm. So it was also using the things with a, a, a different tool and how much it's like that's become their play. And then they play with the language a lot more too. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the key is, you know, the book may be officially a parenting book because when you, when you market a book, you need to pick your audience <laughs> but I like to call it you know I like to call it, we are kids for kids of all ages I mean we all need that play we all need a way to to find you know to connect to nature and we to find the relaxation that works for us I mean it's a handbook it's a guide no matter you know if you love art or fitness or food you know if you just love to cook then you know maybe like you're talking about it could just be really you know, being more mindful and meditative with, with the fruit, the produce that you purchase at, at the store or a painting, you know, from, or, you know, whatever you produce, whatever you create. Um, but in nature, the science shows nature stimulates creativity and curiosity as well. So what, you know, being outside and immersed and, or looking at the natural backgrounds, it all, it all kind of feeds into itself. It, it boosts uh, test scores, um, but I love that. I love what you're saying. And I think we all need it. And if we don't have that nature connection and feeling more relaxed and how are we ever going to help somebody else and help our children learn that? So for sure. Um, and let me let Nancy have a moment. Nancy um, is a, a long-term early childhood educator and director at a um, actually in partnership with a hospital in the southern part of Vermont, which is kind of unique because it's really, I think, models that idea of, you know, connect, build, bringing down the silos and connecting, you know, education with health. Um, so 
Nancy, I'm just going to ask you if you had any questions or connections that you wanted to share. No, I think, you know, I took April's class with curriculum in the outdoor classroom, and that was a really eye opener and, and COVID as well. So really looking, how do I get, we have birth to five and how do we get them outside? And, you know, the three to fives pretty much love the outside, but the birth to two, it's like pulling teeth sometimes getting them out. So really looking as we made our playground more engaging for those young children and safe places for them to be and shade for them. Them. You know, we have a nice path, and I had parent, I had parents, I had one parent and his father um, chop down trees and make us um, stools. But now we just, we just um, enrolled a, a highly um, <clears throat> needy child who we don't feel quite as safe going out into the woods just yet. You know, we have to find our boundaries and figure out because I'm really thinking this is what she needs, and. Um, <clears throat> You know, at one time they didn't let her go out and I said, oh, no, 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 no. She needs to be out, if anything. You, I don't care if you do a one-on-one -on -one and go out, but she needs to be out. Don't ever take away that outside time. So, you know, they're slowly coming around. It's been, it's been a haul, um, but I think COVID helped us. Um, you know, you have to look at some of the positive sides and things. So I'm really looking forward. I, I was kind of looking at your book, so I'm, I'm anxious. I want to order it and, and bring it to the staff and show them. Um, so I think it's a great move. I think it's really exciting with all the information that's coming out right now. Yeah, and I, I feel like this would be a good book too to have on your parent resource shelf or have, you know, like we have a Lent in my preschool program. I, I just teach part-time there and I teach for our college the other time. But in my preschool program, having books that, you know, can go home with families, this would be one that would be great because it's chock full of lots of different ideas. And if you look at the content of it, one of the things I love about nature-based approaches is that it's either free or very, very low cost, you know? Yeah. And so it's so accessible. Um, and, you know, it's not, nature doesn't mean we have to travel to hours to a national park. It's like, it's what's outside in our backyard. Um, one thing that I wanted to mention too, is there's a really handy dandy, um, um, book discussion guide. You want to talk about that, Sandy? Because I think I could see also this, the discussion guide or having a book group, you know, whether that is for your niche, like within your childcare center or your school or your, you know, university or your community or the ladies that you know, or whatever, uh, your pickleball friends. Um, <laughs> but um, how have folks used the discussion guide and where can people find that? Um, yeah. Yes. Yeah, so I have been part of um, a few, uh, you know, invited to speak at a few um, uh, book clubs, you know, online. And one was with a physician, a pediatrician who runs, you know, a monthly parenting um, book club. And so that was really great. And, and all those are recorded as well. And there's links on my, my website for that. Um, and then, you know, featured in a nature parenting group on Facebook. But yeah, I really wanted to make it, um, you know, because there is a lot of information and I thought it would be perfect for, you know, PTAs or especially all the nature schools um, for the for the parents to get together and talk about it. And and a lot of them have their own experience so they can share and then hopefully get new ideas. And I also want to point out that what I think is really what I was very impressed with my publisher in this process is a lot of nature parenting books don't have an index. Um, but there's a, a very thorough index in here. So if you're just, you know, I want it to be used as a research tool too. So if you're interested in float therapy, you can, you know, go in the index and find that, you know, or um, labyrinth meditative walking, you know, there's, there's a lot of these very kind of cutting edge um, tools as well that I was really excited to dig into. And I want that to, you know, um, really stimulate, you know, new, new ideas for, for families and teachers and others that are that are interested in, in feeling happier and calmer with nature, so. <laughs> awesome, yeah, and the so the website is ecohappinessproject.com, right? Um, and those of you here live, I dropped it in the chat box, but in the recording, you can't see the chat box, so that's not helpful, but ecohappinessproject.com is the website. And on the website, you can find that, you can find this, the, if you did decide you wanted to do a book group, it's nice because, yeah. you know, sometimes when I've done book clubs before, I feel like there's a lot of effort in, in it because you're like, one, you're trying to have read ahead and then two, have some, you know, thought provoking discussions. But I love that the sort of like the work has already done for you. And so I think that's an awesome tool. Um, yeah, I have a blog post. It's called like 
how to start your own parenting book club. And in there, you can easily um, download that for free. And then I also have, um, you can sign up for the newsletter. I have a free um, calendar that gives you some, like a month of ideas um, and then tons of other resources and blog posts. So definitely check it out and let me know what you think. And if awesome. you want me to add any new information. <laughs> okay. Um, and, you know, I, I find that with a lot of the people that I work with and myself included, that I think the barrier always is time. Um, and, you know, I know, intu I know intellectually that when I am the busiest is also when I need nature the most. Um, so I don't know if you could just speak to that about, you know, I know that you can't magically create more time for us, but what, what are some of your thoughts about that, Sandy? Yeah, so I talk a lot about building a nature habit and I kind of, you know, use that as the same, you know, venue as like, you know, building a mindfulness habit, um, a fitness routine, brushing your teeth, right? Um, it's really, the studies show it's, it's more effective to do a little bit of nature every day, like, you know, about 20 minutes, um, then trying to fit it all in, you know, once a month or once a week. So it's the same concept of meditation that just work it in. And in fact, if you're any kind of you know, doing your fitness routine or doing your mindfulness routine, just, just couple it with nature. So, you know, go and work out, get your workout outside, um, do your mindfulness outside. Um, so it's really, and it's also about finding what you already love and what your children already love. So again, if they like art, you know, instead of sitting inside and painting, you know, a building or drawing cartoons, encourage them to, to really, you know, connect to nature while they're, they're doing their art. So yeah. it, it's really, I don't think it's a, you need that much more time. You just need to be a little creative in how you use your time. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And I, like you said earlier in the conversation about eating outdoors, like that's a routine mm -hmm. that we do with our family. I have two teenage, two teenagers, a 16 and 17 year old, mm -hmm. and we've been eating outside, you know, in warmer, you know, we live in Vermont, so clearly it's not year round, but it, when we can, and it just, it's so nice because it just feels like, mm -hmm. You know, there's that whole busyness of getting home and cooking the dinner and getting on the table. But when we're outside, we're fully present, you know, mm -hmm. and we're noticing the changes that are happening around us. And we have, you know, we're, we're like on the edge of a town, but we have a lot of trees and we have a forest behind us. And so it's just amazing the things that we've noticed, even just during our meal times together. And so there again, it's like, it doesn't mean that you have to schedule like we're eating anyway. It's just that we moved our location. Exactly. Um, so coupling it with something that you're already doing, I think is, is excellent advice. Um, yeah, all right. So I think we'll leave it maybe like one more sort of food for thought, Sandy, and then we'll, um, I'll stop the recording and we can just, you kind of wrap up. Um, yeah, you know, and the, you can start anywhere. Like if you need help, like I said, I, I have a lot of information. Um, I really do enjoy, you know, and, and reach out if you have a question about maybe something like I haven't written about pickleball yet, but maybe I should, you know, I, I try to add new blog posts and, and information on there um, to, to keep people, you know, really attuned to what more we can do to connect to nature. And there's always something innovative. Um, you know, I have a whole post on how to utilize your local library mm -hmm. on, and how that connects to nature. I mean, gosh, libraries now aren't just offering books, right? Uh, you can get puzzles with nature scenes. <laughs> you can, you know, um, go fishing with, you know, at the library. There's so many um, different opportunities to look for in, in your local community. So get out there, enjoy it, and and uh, grab yourself some eco happiness because we all need it, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for being here. Um, I, um, you know, it, we're recording this on the first day of, of autumn on the autumn equinox and, you know, the change of the seasons, I think to me is, is always, it's kind of like, it's starting like a new year, you know, or starting a new phase in this, you know, cycle cyclical kind of nature. Um, and so it's a great, I think a great conversation to sort of, you know, think about where we're putting our time and energy. So thanks so much for being here. I'm going to hit end on the recording, but I don't quite want you to drop off just yet. So we'll just stop there for a second.